Hello! In this video, we will review the skeleton building process and pivots. First, I will import my character mesh. For building a skeleton, we have two choices. We can build a skeleton from scratch, or we can use one of the pre-made half skeletons here in my skeleton menu. You can see we have a half rig for Unreal, and we have a half rig for Unity. If I press that button, I now have a new character folder called Unity 3D Skeleton. I can rename this. And you see here I have Build Pose and Skin and Check. In order to work on our skeleton and our pivots, we want to make sure that we are in Build Pose. Now if I expand my tree, you can see here that the Unity skeleton has been made for me. All of the joints are parented well underneath each other and they have all been named for me. If I go into my preferences, I can change the size that my tree menu expands to up to four times or I can disable that. But since my joints are all displaying correctly, and nothing gets cut off, then I will keep it at times two. In order to start working, I first want to make sure that all of my meshes are in the same character folder as my joints. Now I will press the number one in my number pad in order to go into wireframe. Four is for your joints and pivots is five. You can see here that my Unity Half Skeleton has all of the pivots oriented correctly. But since we will be changing the position of my joints, we will have to reorient all of these joints later on. The reason why we have a Half Skeleton is that it makes work a lot easier and faster. It's easier to manage only half the joints and work on only half the skinning as opposed to doing all of the joints and all of the skinning at once. Uh, there are less things displaying in the menus and on screen, which makes it easier to select things. And it is highly recommended for symmetrical characters, as it is quicker. So we will begin moving our joints. And you can see here that I have this pivot edition mode. So it, with it on, if I move a joint, you see that only that joint is moving. The rest of the joints are not moving. But if I deselect that, you can see that the joints and all the joints that are a child to that joint move with it. Now I can go ahead and start positioning all of my joints so that they fit my character. I can also go ahead and start working in my other views. You can see here that I can also select my joints in my picker. Right now, all of these joints that are displaying in my picker are in the same chronological order as they are in my tree, um, and that is by hierarchy order. But if I wanted to, I could select any of my joints and I could move where they display in my picker. So I will put them underneath my eye and right over my shoulder. That way that while I'm working, if I scroll up and down with my arrows on my keyboard, then you can see that I am now selecting my joints in order of how they display in my picker. 
and I, I like to have all of my fingers at the very end. That way I can select all of the bigger joints and work on the, the joints that have a wider and more important character selection and then work on my fingers at the very end. Now that I have moved my joints to where I want them to be, I can add to the skeleton through these top buttons here, and I can reorient my pivots. First, let's take a look at our preferences. I have Auto Orient on Creation. This means that when I create a new joint, the pivot information displayed here will be used for that creation. I have Joint and Pivot Size Factor. This is the size that the pivots and joints display as in my scene. And I have Snap YZ Plane Pixel Threshold for orthographic views. When you are using any of these top tools here, so like Create New Joint, in order to navigate around your scene, you can hold down the V key. V as in void. And to stop using the tool, you can either click on the same button again or you can press enter. You can see that as I have created those new new joints, they display inside of the mesh that you clicked on. You can add joints to a hierarchy by selecting a joint and pressing the second button here. Now if I click in between those two joints, you can see that a new joint has been added. I can parent joints by selecting the child and then control selecting the parent and clicking on this third button here. And I can unparent joints by selecting the child and clicking on the fourth button. We will talk about the center joint in the skinning tutorial. Now I can go ahead and rename those joints in my picker. And I can also rename these joints in my tree. Let's go ahead and reorient the joints. What I will do is select everything in my picker, so that's all of my joints, and I will deselect the root and my eye joint. And I'm deselecting them because I want them to keep the world axis. Now I have here aim axis is C and my secondary axis is Y, and the reason for this is that I want my C axis for rotations of my twist when I'm animating. I want my x-axis to be my main rotation, and I want my y-axis to be my secondary rotation. So with all these joints selected, I can go ahead and press this button, and that will reorient all of my joints. Now you can see that all of the joints are pointing their c-axis to the next joint. Some of the joints are facing their y in a different direction. So I can go ahead and manually change those. You can see here I have discrete mode on. So if we check in skin and check, and I rotate in my x-axis, you can see that my leg goes sideways. But since I want my x-axis to be my main rotation, I can go back into my build pose, 
and I will rotate it so that the green or the y-axis is pointing backwards. Now if I go back into skin and check, I can rotate in X and you can see that the leg goes backwards and forward. I can turn off discrete to make that rotation smooth. Now back in build pose, I want to do the same for my spine. I want these spine joints to be facing backwards with the y-axis. And if I use my discrete mode, you can see that that gives me a cleaner rotation.